Deputy, uh, question number 12, Deputy Boyd Barrett, please. Uh, Minister, uh, this week I went out and joined um, lesser paid teachers, uh, rank and file teachers from the INTO, from the ASTI, TUI, who were out protesting against the fact that there is a category of lesser paid teachers, people who are employed as teachers uh, post 211 or post 212. And they want to know are you going to, as part of these uh, pay talks, to commit to the principle of equality, and by which they mean, so we're clear, Minister, that there is one single pay scale for all teachers. Uh, I propose, can call it to group uh, questions 12 and 13 together. The 10% reductions in starting pay for certain new entrants was introduced in January 2011 as part of the National Recovery Plan to reduce the public service pay bill by the then government. The issue of addressing the difference in incremental salary scales between those public servants who entered employment since 2011 and those who entered before that date was addressed with relevant union interests under the provisions of the Haddington Road Agreement. From the 1st of November 2013 and the post, uh, excuse me, from the 1st of November 2013, pre and post 2011 pay scales were merged into a single scale applicable to each grade. Generally, the third point of the 1st of, of November 2013 pay scale is equivalent to the first point of the pre-2011 pay scale. Guidelines in relation to this uh, and the merging of the scales are available on my department's website. Any further adjustment has to be considered under the framework of the Lansdowne Road Agreement, but has to also be considered in the context of the total cost of the agreement, which is €844 million, Euro, and the total cost of the outstanding FMP restoration post Lansdowne Road Agreement, which is €1.4 billion. Euro. And under that agreement, we have made progress, uh, Cahirloch, in addressing particular issues such as the restoration of supervision and substitution payments, new entrant payments in the education sector, and the restoration of rent allowances to certain sectors. The protest the other day was organised by the rank and file, right? Uh, ordinary teachers, mostly young, not all young, but uh, who are this lesser paid category. And the reduction in the level of inequality that you just referred to in rather technical language still leaves a situation where a teacher, or an usher, by the way, or other uh, sectors, or public sector workers, who came in after 2011, in the case of the teachers, will, over the course of their lifetime, as things stand with your proposals, earn €100,000 less over the course of their lifetime than somebody who happened to come in before 2011 and was on the old scale. Now, that is totally unacceptable for people doing the same job the same number of years. In fact, they will be working harder with all the productivity proposals, uh, Croke Park hours and all the rest of it, and uh, they're on this lesser scale and will earn that much less over the course of the lifetime. And just as we are now discovering with the nurses, where they're leaving the country, they won't work uh, in our public health service when we desperately need them, there's now a substitution crisis in education for the same reason. The teachers are starting to walk because they're not accepting this pay apartheid. Are you going to commit to get rid of it? So let's talk about some figures amidst uh, the uh, uh, comment there of the Deputy. From the 1st of January of 2017, uh, under the uh, measures that I agreed, uh, alongside with Minister Richard Bruton, for uh, INTO and TUI members, uh, the, uh, a new entrant joined becoming a teacher would be paid a salary of €35,837. By the 1st of January 2018, by the second half of new entrant restoration, when that has occurred, it will be considerably ahead of that. So amidst all the claims that you are making regarding pay, and I want to recognise and I see it every single morning when I go into classrooms, let's bear in mind two things. That the amount of funding that I have to use to address the claims that those teachers are making is the same pot of funding that we have to use to pay for service improvements, to pay for investment in our schools and hospitals.
But two, let's also acknowledge that with the plan that we have in place, we're looking at a starting salary when everything is included, uh, all the different allowances and payments that are made to teachers of €35,800 which I would contend to the House is a salary that reflects the great value that we as a country place on those who teach in our classrooms. All the usual chestnuts, but not answering the question, right? And that is, are we going to have equality? Are we going to have equality for people with the same professional training, who are going to work the same amount of years, in fact, are going to work more years uh, now because of other uh, attacks, uh, are we going to have a single pay scale for all of them, right? Or are we going to have the pay apartheid, where over the course of the lifetime, someone earns €100,000 or less? The fact that you consider the starting pay uh, good, well, try, try and get a, some accommodation in Dublin on that starting pay, and you'll soon find out how good it is. And as I said to you, we know there's a problem with nurses uh, in terms of paying conditions, and now it's becoming evident in the teaching profession. They can't get substitutes, uh, classes are going without teachers now, if somebody is ill, because teachers don't want to work in this situation where they are treated as lesser paid, a subclass of teachers uh, uh, because of this pay apartheid, and you won't commit, no matter how much you're asked, to the principle of equality. Uh, because the principle of fairness that I have to uh, respond back to is a different one to the one the deputy is concerned with. I have to be able to make sure that I'm fair to people who need services. I have to make sure I'm fair to people uh, who need housing and making sure we have the money available to build us. What you do, Deputy, is you come in here and you deal with each issue in isolation. What I have to be able to do is deal with each matter collectively because the resolution and the progress of all of these different issues comes out of the same amount of funding which is the money that the taxpayer contributes to their taxes and what we are able to borrow. And I cannot commit to any further um, uh, uh, change in our pay policy because that's taking place and being negotiated at the moment between my own department and representatives of those who work in our public services in the Workplace and Relation Commission. And what we are engaged in there, Deputy, is trying to find a way to see if we can affordably unwind the FEMP legislation, something you also call for. Uh, and in fact, I'm sure you'd look for it all to happen at a quicker pace than we're able to do. You'd probably look for it to happen immediately, which goes back to the very point, well, I'm glad you've acknowledged it there, uh, if you can come up with a recipe for me, Deputy, as to how we can find 1.4 billion euro immediately while meeting all the other needs that you raise with me on a regular basis, I look forward to hearing what that formula is. If you could also assure me that it wouldn't destroy the economy that produces all the tax to deliver thank, the services you, we're talking about, I'd be interested in that too.